Hopefully you guys have some crap in your life you need to get rid of and this will inspire you to get rid of it. I mean, do I really need all this crap? I'd like to think not. A lot of it is stuff I haven't used in a while and it's just sitting here taking up valuable storage space and I think there's some rats in here and I need to... I need to get rid of this stuff. But it's tough because it's like, do I need this right now? No, I don't need it right now, but could I use it eventually? Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the problem. It's like the stuff in this box, I haven't touched in years. Years I haven't touched this stuff, but I think that at some point I could use it, which I probably could at some point, but is it worth having that baggage cluttering up my life? <sighs> Picture frames with some of my artwork in it, the, some of my photography and, and bags for holding photography stuff. It's like I'm, I could use this at some point. <sighs> this thing that we've got two of now, I think. This old microphone that looks like it hasn't even ever been used. And it's a piece of crap, which is probably why it's never been used. But somebody could probably benefit from it, so I'm gonna throw it away. And here's kind of the problem too. I mean, like I can use some of this stuff at some point. I've got a compressor there that I have used this year, but it just sits there for the rest of the year. That whiskey glass has been sitting there since Garrett and I first did our first podcast. I just haven't brought it upstairs for whatever dumb reason. Those husky bags definitely come in handy at time, but I haven't touched those in the whole entire year. But it just leaves all this stuff stacking up here that's not even in the storage spot anymore. And I guess these are ultimately first world problems, but having all this space filled up physically causes my mental space to be cluttered as well and I'm weighing the benefit of having this stuff in the wings for potential use against actually having the space in my head clear so I can think and not feel like I'm completely out of whack. I guess I should have a goal and the goal is going to be to get all this stuff up onto these racks so clear enough space that I can get that stuff up here because that's all the stuff for roaming reptiles, for transporting the animals, the cart, and all that stuff. I'm going to be using that a lot this next coming year. I want it to be up on the shelves in places that I use things, you know, like a leaf blower. I use that to blow out the driveway every now and then, so it's in a good spot where I use it. All this stuff I don't access hardly at all, and I just need to... That's what I need to do. A little organization. I'm just so busy a lot of the time that I, I haven't been able to get to this crap, and it's just been weighing in the back of my mind and making me a little emotionally unstable. Twelve days of whiskey. I mean, I can't get rid of that, right? I can't just get rid of it. I'm bringing this to the Anaheim show and I'm passing it out to you folks at the show. This studio space here, this is attached to our house. It's, it's vacant now. Uh, Hillary's friend who is living here has moved out and they're showing it to people right now and I would love Love to make it into an office space where I can have video stuff set up where I can just have it set I don't have to set it up break it down organize a little more space, but It's just not within reality right now for us to rent that space out too, but man that would be freaking sweet dude I've, I've been mulling over I thought about maybe we can just swing it make it happen But I don't think I'll be able to make it happen, but I think on the next run well this this year this year is gonna be a lot of things happening this year's gonna be a lot of things happening and I just, I just don't know. I don't know. I need to clear this shit out. And herein lies the problem. Open box of Husky contractor bags next to an open box of Husky contractor bags that I didn't use and that I didn't find and I opened up, a, went and bought a second box. They're both open. This is why this needs to happen. <laughs> Empty. Empty.
empty, empty, empty. The truck is empty. Oh, it felt good to get that stuff out of here. My little guy Screamies came with me. We dropped that stuff off. It's gone. And I feel great. I really did not need that crap. And I'm glad that it's gone. And hopefully you guys have some crap in your life you need to get rid of. And this will inspire you to get rid of it. <laughs> but, okay, a couple, couple things. First of all, when Eli and I were driving back up the driveway, there was a red-tailed hawk that flew up off the driveway. And Eli thinks he saw... A feather fall so we're gonna go investigate see if we can find a hawk feather also while I was driving I was taking my time to be cautious and careful which I, I do tend to do most of the time when I'm driving but I find myself rushing sometimes too like this whole feeling this morning I had when I was feeling like emotionally unstable just like felt the pressure to, to rush and need to get things done and while granted there are things that need to get done on a daily basis while I was driving back and taking my time I, w I remember this guy that I saw one time in Hawaii. And he was an older Hawaiian gentleman driving a convertible with some people who were visiting the island. Gu guaranteed they were visiting him. And he was kind of showing them all the ways and like... I overheard a small part of their conversation while they were driving. And he was telling them, when the light turns yellow, you don't try and rush to make it through. You just slow down and wait for it to change. And he's like, that's the culture. That's how you do it. You don't try to rush to the yellow lights. It turns yellow, you slow down. And you wait and you be patient and that's part of that island culture and i just i that was years ago years ago i saw that guy but he's still there just that split second of that conversation i caught from them outside of my truck window while those guys were in that convertible and uh i just wanted to pass that along too because i think it's an important thing is to remember to slow down and and not try to rush through everything because chances are well you never know what's around the corner it could be dangerous you might need to slow down for it and uh right my guy does that sound like a good message are you listening to what i'm saying or are you just looking at yourself in the monitor let's go see if that hawk feather's down there i think maybe okay be real quiet i don't we don't want to scare the hawk away Whoa. Ooh, careful my guy what did you say i said be real careful we don't want to scare the hawk away all right why why don't we want to scare the hawk away because we want to film it well he had flown right up into this tree right here i'm not seeing him Anywhere. Well, Eli, I think that no hawk or the feather, but eh, is what it is. Eli. What? What do you know? I know. Desert hairy scorpions. Desert hairy scorpions? I feel like we've talked about this before. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I know about them that they could sting on pimps and bite, and that's all I know. <laughs> you want to do a race. And I have these heavy ends, and you have a big camera. My legs are tired now. It's a steep hill, my guy. Or if you slip down all the way there, all the way to the bottom, will you really get hurt? Probably. Why is your camera so important? Well, if you want to film, then that's why it's important, because we need it for filming. Oh yeah, and Noah's. Let's go back up. All right, I got something in the snake room I want to share with you guys. It's Roxanne. Last night I was doing a live stream and she started just going off, like getting crazy, running around in this cage faster than I've ever seen her run around the enclosure, ever. Like 10 times faster. And I was like, worried, like what the hell's going on with this animal? And I looked closely, it looked like she was running out with her eyes closed. And I was like, that is not good and that's not right. But what turned out is that she had actually loosened up the shed, or her skin, on the top part of her face. And it was covering her face and her eyes. And so I helped her get that off. And basically the only part of her that's shed now is this top part of her face here. Sorry, right then. This, this top part of her face, she's got the skin off of that. And then like her bottom jaw and the rest of her body still has the shed on. And I didn't want to get it off prematurely because she's probably still getting ready to work on it. But I did give her a nice soak in the sink this morning and, and just to help her out. But she's shedding for her first time here. She hasn't shed since she's been here. Look at you. You're beautiful. 
You want to come out again? I think that was a yes. I just thought it was really interesting that she had her first shed while she's here, or is starting to, and I had that same feeling like I need to get this place cleaned up and get rid of this stuff. It's kind of like she was in sync with my feelings a little bit. Huh. It's time to get all that old stuff out of here and let the new shine through and feel so much better. You can actually see your red come through now that you get this fresh skin. Really cool. Well, that was awesome. Couple of firsts today. First time Roxanne shedding here with us. Cleaned out all her bed and brand new cocoa blocks. And first time I've ever seen her drink out of her tub. I always wondered, like, does she actually drink? Because I've never seen her drink. That was cool. That was awesome. I'm stoked. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling great now. I am feeling wonderful. I'm gonna take it to the next level, go jump in the sauna and purge some toxins out of my, my body too. And then I'll come back, check in with you guys. Whew, sauna. Man, it's, it's actually, the sauna has been a huge help on this shoulder here. It's starting to feel better. Every time I go in the sauna, it feels better. So I'm trying to go in as much as possible and also getting a little workout in. Sauna, workout. Eli! Mr. No Sage has been gone. They're not playing my game. This guy's been gone uh, having a sleep. Promise! Yeah, I promise. This guy's been gone having a sleepover at his cousin's house all day, all night. And I just wanted to know, No Sage. Oh, by the way, if you guys haven't gone and checked out Noah's channel yet, he put up his first video at this point, and I know some of you guys have. Uh, interesting thing is that YouTube turned off the comments for the video. I just didn't set it that way. I set that it actually wasn't content made for kids, because even though it's made by a kid, it's not necessarily made for kids. He's proven at this point that he knows more about certain things than many adults, so I figured the information that he passed on in that video, although I don't recall exactly what it was, I'm sure it was something that somebody could benefit from but over the age of 18. But YouTube turned off the comments on their own, probably because they, their algorithm or if, I don't know if it was an actual person that noticed that it was a kid doing the video. So, and I could have gone and looked to turn them on, but I figured at this point, I don't think he needs input from random people on the internet on his videos. Let's just do what you know and hurry up. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Hi, what do you know? I know. Centipede in my first video. What about the centipede in your first video? It was about this long. Was it? And I found it under the, a rock over there. And I didn't see the things, but I filmed it. And that's all I know. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> gotcha! That's my turn for what you know. You already know. did what you know, my I want to do it again. What do you know? I know. Rattlesnakes. What about rattlesnakes? They, they rattle their tail and they're wanting stuff to go away. And they have to fence some things and they swivel like a dime back and that's all I know. <laughs> Did you guys catch all that? I missed something in there. Okay, Eli, hold on. I'm gonna record my part, okay? Can you stop yelling in the background for me, my guy? Okay. Thanks, my friend. I, I don't yell during your part, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So if you don't yell during my part, I'd appreciate it, my guy. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you guys for tuning in with us today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, of course. <laughs> it's been a few days in where I haven't been eating after 8 p.m. And just that simple thing right there, my mind already feels better, even though I started today a little rough. Uh, I, I can feel me getting my, my state back, and I feel like I'm getting my energy back, and it's not even next year yet. It's still, for me, it's not quite next year. Or is it? I don't know. What day is it? Anyway, I feel the energy coming back, guys. So I'm going to harness the energy, put it through this lens to the best of my ability for the benefit of my viewers. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you guys continue to enjoy it. <sighs> We're out of here. You guys take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Aloha. You guys still here? It's time to go home. Bye. I almost forgot one thing. I wanted to ask you. How do you feel about facing your arch nemesis? Who? Who do you think? You? No, not me. Eli? <laughs> no, not Eli. Jaden? No, not Jaden. Tell me. Your arch nemesis. I don't know what that I know what a nemesis is, but I don't know what an arch nemesis is. The corn snake. <laughs> um, bye bye. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them next time. I'm gonna go over some of the failures that I thought were big failures this year. Uh, some of the successes, and we're going to talk about what's coming forward for the future of the channel in 2020, including a new channel, and uh, yeah.